Hello. Welcome to a chaotic video. <laughs> I'm going to be impulse making a dress for a staff bonding event because I don't own anything that would currently work because it's a 1920s theme. So the way this video is going to work is I'm just going to put you on a time lapse while I do things and then I'll come pop back on and actually face you and talk about what I'm doing. And yeah, you're gonna see the true blue, what it's like for me to impulse make a dress. So I'm gonna go figure it out. Oh, I guess I should tell you what style of dress I'm doing. So I'm gonna do like this like cowl neck satin slip dress because the party is themed uh, flapper and 20s style. I don't currently own anything like that because personally I need a waistline to look good and <laughs> fit 20s style doesn't include any divine waist in their dresses so I need to make something. <laughs> and just as a caveat this is staff bonding party we're following rules and there's only 12 of us so Let's get into making this dress. So, hi, focus on me, thank you. So, I cut out a square of my emerald green satin and I'm going to fold it on the bias to create the cowl neck. And the reason I only cut this much is because this is all I have. Because <laughs> I'm using scrap fabric for this project because I obviously don't want to buy something if it's not really my style and it's only going to be worn for like costume parties and stuff. But so yeah, I'm going to make kind of like a cowl neck bodice and then have the V come down and then have the dress, you know, come down from that. So yeah, first I'm going to pin this on. Tia or Charlotte over here. Those are my mannequins, if I haven't mentioned that before. But yeah, we're we're figuring this out. This is not an in-depth tutorial because I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I think I'm going to sew bias stitch to make a bias stitch to make it a perfect triangle so that when I'm trying to pin it all together, it's not falling off of its bias line. But let's move you so you can see that.
Okay, so now I took two of these rectangular trapezoid pieces that I had laying around. I measured to where from like the distance between the strap and the bottom of the point. And I'm gonna sew down, connecting the two to have a seam down the front. But now I'm gonna go from the pins at the top and press the edges down to create a V shape. I don't know if you can see that, probably not. But then this way when I sew down the front and open it, I'll see the V and then know where I need to sew this V. Do we catch on? I don't know. I'm gonna be sewing mostly with basting stitches to figure out if this will look good. And then if it does, I will go in with regular stitches. So come to the ironing board.
Okay. I think this looks not bad. Could be better. But it is what it is. <laughs> um, so now it's I'm gonna pin it to my shirt and then kind of figure out where the armpit needs to be so I can do a little curve up to where the cow neck triangle piece meets the bottom flowy piece. And yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but neither do you. This is an adventure for both of us. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna take a little mental break to figure out what the heck I'm doing with this dress. I'll be back. Okay, so I had my little mental break. Not literal, like, mental breakdown, but like, just a brain break. Because I was getting overwhelmed with this project because I didn't know what I was doing. As you might have learned from the previous clips. But yeah, so I did a little bit more sewing and let me just show you what I did. Cause I didn't film it. Cause I, I think better when I don't have the camera on me. And this was just one of those situations where I just needed to turn the camera off and figure out what the heck I was doing. But let me show you what I did. Okay. She's all pinned up and I added the back, which is just like more of these same kind of slightly tapered rectangle pieces that I use in the front. And I also curved out the armpit. I think I'm just going to leave the back kind of like loose and flowy. And yeah, it's a dress from the 20s, so it's pretty shapeless, <laughs> so there's not much to show in terms of silhouette and stuff, but I think I like how the cowl neck sits. I went for a quick little try on and I think I like it with the little V here. Maybe I'll go to the fabric store and see if I can find like some kind of trim or something to put there just to make it less awkward of a scene. But at the same time, I might do some beading with these, come on focus. There we go. Oh, no. These like bronzy beads that I have that I might just like stitch a little line down that seam. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing guys, but we're on this adventure together. Who knows? This may just end up being an idea or something for me if it fails completely. But let's be hopeful. It's like nine something and I can definitely tell I'm too tired to work on this anymore so I'm gonna turn off the camera for the night go shower regroup and we'll come back tomorrow to finish this okay it's a new day I don't remember where I left off yesterday because I think I did a little bit with the camera off but I'm going to tell you what's left and hopefully I didn't miss anything. So what's left is I need to take in the back because it's just a little bit gapy when I like pin it on. And then I need to obviously finish off this icky edge of the top back and then add straps and 
hemi. And then I think I'm going to add some beadwork to kind of camouflage this bee. So yeah, that's what we're doing. I've already had my boyfriend tell me where I need to take in the back with the safety pin. So that's where we're gonna start. And then to enclose this raw edge around the back, I'm going to create a facing just so it, we can like fold it in and it's really neat. And then I can attach the straps within that. So yeah, let's get back to work and we can finish this tonight. Okay, so straps are sewn and then the facing is sewn together. So now we're gonna take a regular safety pin fit. Yes it does. So to turn the straps right side out, we're gonna take a safety pin, stick it in the end, one side of your strap, and Feed that through to the other side. And that's my easy way of flipping straps that are really skinny or any long skinny tube. Like this could be a tie or something for a dress.
So now we're going to press these with our iron. And we're also gonna press the seams of our facing as well. And then we're gonna surge around all the raw edges of this and then attach them. Pretty simple. Let's go iron. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna take the facing and put it right sides together to the dress. And then we're gonna sandwich in the straps too. Now we just stitch this closed. Okay, so I just tried it on to measure where the straps go in the front for like height wise. And I think after trying it on, actually no, that'll be fixed when I tack these down, the facing down. Cause it was spewing all out in the back. But yeah, so I'm just gonna do a nice simple top stitch at the point to seal in that strap. Then this is done. 
I'm gonna do the beating off camera while watching trashy TV on Netflix because that's the only way to do a BDS like simple task like embroidery or beating is to watch crap on Netflix. So yeah, this is the last you'll see of my face before you see the final reveal, which will be right And that's the dress that I made for my staff bonding event. I like how it turned out. Probably not gonna wear it too often. Um, one thing I would note is I took in the back a little bit too much that the cowl neck wasn't really cowl necking as much as it was before. But I like how it turned out. Hopefully you can recreate this based on this video. I doubt it, but. <laughs> I hope you can, and if you do, please tag me in your post on social media if you share it. I am Emma Outshines everywhere, so yeah, tag me if you make a cowl neck dress like this, but hope you have a good day. Like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell, all the good things, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.